Hello and welcome to the Crochet Business School podcast. I'm Kelly Thomas, the Crochet Profit Queen, and I'm going to show you how you can make a living from your crochet while avoiding the burnout and being able to make what you want and when you want. What makes a good crochet picture? So when selling online, anything online, your pictures can be the first and only chance you have to make a good impression and make someone want to click and find out more. This is what makes your picture so vitally important to get right. Your pictures can attract attention for two reasons. One is because they're making a really good impression and they want to know more. The second is because they're making a bad impression and they're being remembered for all the wrong reasons. So the bad impression photos tend to come from brand new sellers. It doesn't matter if you're selling what you make or patterns, if you are new to taking photos, it's very easy to make the really common mistakes. And so when it comes to taking a good picture, it's good to know what makes a bad picture. That's the place to start, making sure you don't make the common mistakes. The biggest mistake is not taking the picture in natural light. Now I know natural light isn't always available. You can't always get outside into a decent place. You don't always have um, a sunny window you can take pictures in front of. The biggest mistake you can make in those circumstances is taking it under fluorescent light. The light bulbs we have in our houses, they're not daylight lamps. They do not give out the same light as daylight. It tends to be yellow tinted, it tends to be dimmer, and it gives your photos this yellowish tint. You can always tell when it's been taken in a room with a light on, because it's yellow, and it stands out like a sore thumb. You want your pictures to be bright and clear. So if you can't get natural light, you need to get a daylight lamp. Now, fortunately, these are really cheap and you can get them really easy on Amazon. Just search for a daylight lamp and you will get loads coming up and they are reasonably priced. But these will make a hell of a difference to your photos and you will not believe how much better they would look. Another common mistake is taking your photos either on a bed sheet or on a table against a wall. Now, in some contexts, that works, but in most, it doesn't. I remember when I was taking my first product photos, I didn't know anything about selling. And I've still got my first ones, and I cringe when I look at them. The light wasn't too bad, but the setting was awful. I took them on my kitchen table, which was up against a wall, so you could see um, the line where it had been taken. It just didn't look great. It wasn't horrendous, but it certainly wasn't up to scratch when you looked at it, you know, amongst the other photos that it was competing against. And it just looked off. It didn't look professional. It didn't look like thought had been taken. Yes, it showed the product, I, these three little baskets, they look very cute. You could see all the detail in the baskets, they were posed nicely, you could see the detail, it was sharp, but the setup was just not good. It didn't stack up. And with a few little tweaks, my setup would have, did work great once I figured that out. And all it needed was a piece of wallpaper tacked to the wall hanging down onto my table so you couldn't see that line. So you couldn't see the angle of where the wall met the table. It looked so much better. My product photos looked so much better after that. And it's a simple thing like that. Now in context, that setup works well. If I was selling something that had a connection to a kitchen table, if I was, say, selling the pattern for placemats 
or coasters. If I was in a kitchen and I had set it up so I had props, kitchen-like or dining table-like against it, that would have worked. But I didn't. It was not in context, so it didn't look good. And you want to avoid that. And the other thing to avoid is the bed sheet. So you take the photos on top of your sheet or duvet. And yes, the sheets may have a lovely pretty pattern. They may be a neutral colour. But if those sheets are wrinkled, every wrinkle is going to show. And it doesn't look good. That does look very amateur. I won't lie. If I'm scrolling through photos and I see the ones that are taken on a bed and it's all wrinkled, it's it stands out for all the wrong reasons. Now, taking photos on a bed in the right context does work. I mean, I have photos that are taken on a bed, but I got the blanket. It's for a bed, double bed size blanket. I'm using the bed as context. I'm using it to show size. And in those circumstances, it works. But not if you're showing a children's hat lying on the bed. That doesn't work. That's not the right context. And it makes for a bad photo. It gets attention for all the wrong reasons. The other common mistake to make is choosing a really strong coloured background. Now, strong colours can be pulled off if you get it right, but it's difficult. Strong, bold colours like bright pinks, uh, neon colours as a background, they can very much distract from your crochet. They can also bleed the colours from your crochet. So if you've got something that does have, is fairly neutral, the strong colour of the background is going to make your crochet look plain. And it's, going to, it's not going to make it look as good as if you had it on a white background or a more neutral colour. The colour of your background needs to suit what you're selling. It needs to not distract from it. It needs to not pull those colours away so they don't look as vibrant as they would otherwise. Your crochet should be the centre of attention. All eyes should be on your crochet and your eye be pulled to it. So if you've got a strong coloured background or too many props, it distracts. And all of a sudden your eye is looking everywhere and it's, the focus is not on your crochet anymore. So you, you kind of got to stop that. You need to make sure the background you choose and your props do not distract from your crochet. They should complement it and not distract from it. So those are the biggest photo mistakes that I see. So if you're not making them, what then makes a good picture? A good picture shows your crochet in all its glory. It's the centre of attention. You can see all the detail. You can see how the colours pop. You can see it in bright, natural light. And you want either a neutral or a natural background. So indoors or outdoors. Neutral or natural. You want to show your crochet in context. How it's used. If it's clothing, how would you wear it? If it's something for the house. Where would you find it? What room would it be in? Can you put props next to it that show how big it is, what the sizing is supposed to be? If you've got some special stitches in there, show the detail. Have pictures really nice and sharp of the close-up of that detail. Most listings where you can sell your crochet or your patterns let you upload multiple pictures. Etsy, you can upload up to 10. Ravelry is not as many. I think it's seven or eight. But Etsy also lets you upload a video. That video has no sound, so it's just the image. But that still gives you a great chance to show your item in context. And it could just be sat on your hand and you're slowly turning it. 
You don't have to have anything fancy. The best way to figure out how your crochet is going to look great and command attention is to do a search on Etsy or Ravelry and see what other pictures other people are taking. Have a look through. You know, photo research is a thing. You can do it on Pinterest as well. But search for an item like yours and then see which photos stand out to you. Which ones stand out as good and why do they catch your eye? Which items stand out as bad and why are they making you think that? Taking a good photo of your crochet so that it gets attention and gets those clicks and gets people uh, clicking through, finding out more to buy comes from your photos. You need to know what is good and bad. The bad so you avoid the mistakes and you can learn those lessons and the good so that you get it right and go that extra mile so that your picture is going to stand out amongst the crowd. Because if you're not standing out amongst the crowd, you're not going to get that all important click. Remember, this is like social media. You scroll, you get search results, you get the pictures and then you scroll. And you're only going to click on the thing that catch your attention. You have to do the same thing with your images. Your listing is going to be one in a ton of search results. It's got to catch the eye. It's got to stand out for the right reasons. It's got to intrigue people to be able to click and find out more and press that buy button. But it all starts with that photo. Your photo is the first and only chance you may get to persuade someone to buy from you. So you have got to create a good product photo in order to make that happen. And it's why it's so vital to get this right. If you do want to know more about taking photos, I do have an ebook that guides you through how to set up your pictures and how to edit them using just your smartphone. You don't need to pay for professional pictures. You can take them yourself with nothing more than your smartphone, a few props that you can find around your house and free editing apps. That's how I do it. I don't pay for any apps to edit my photos. I do it all using free ones. And I take all my pictures with my smartphone. It's simple. It's to hand. And, you know, it's completely at my disposal. You can take great looking photos all by yourself. You just need to know the how. So if you want to know more about that, click the link in the show notes and you can get your hands on that ebook today. So thank you for listening. As always, if you have any questions, please do come to the Facebook group. The link is in the show notes. And otherwise, I shall see you next time for the next episode. Bye for now.